After a two-game split in Las Vegas, the Tigers open up with a nine-game homestand tonight against last year's tournament Cinderella, Stephen F. Austin. Coming from humble beginnings in this neighborhood across from the Lester School in Memphis, football was a ticket to success for Claude Humphrey. To say the Memphis Tigers' next seven games are must-wins is an understatement. It's the 25th anniversary Southern Heritage Classic, a time which brings together family, friends, food, and of course, football. Best of five playoff series can go by quickly if you don't get off to a good start. <laughs> For native Memphian and now Hall of Famer Claude Humphrey, it's all laughs in this local barbershop, but things weren't always this enjoyable. Coming from humble beginnings in this neighborhood across from the Lester School in Memphis, football was a ticket to success for Claude Humphrey. Congratulations, you're a pro football Hall of Famer. And boy, I tell you what, I, I damn near dropped the phone. Drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the first round of the 1968 NFL Draft, Claude Humphrey was a dominating force in the NFL for more than 13 seasons, playing in almost 200 games with the Atlanta Falcons and Philadelphia Eagles, helping the Eagles to their first Super Bowl appearance in 1981. I've waited almost 30 years to get to this podium, so don't rush me, guys. I'm, I'm going to be here for a minute. With his daughter at his side, in the love and support of the rest of his family, that hot August night in Ohio will be one that Humphrey will never forget. Having lost his wife and soulmate Sandra just last year, induction day was even more emotional for Humphrey. Man, I tell you what, I met her when, we, when I was a junior in high school. She walked up to me and she says, I want to introduce myself to you. And she did that. And from then on, I've had Sandra in my life. Humphrey learned that with patience and hard work, anything is possible, even a trip to Canton as a pro football Hall of Famer. Matthew Schwartz, WMC Action News 5. Lights, camera, action. The stage is set for one of Memphis's signature attractions. Good time, good fun, and a lot of energy. It's the 25th annual Southern Heritage Classic, a time which brings together family, friends, food, and of course, football. Bringing together backyard grillers, children, families, college recruiters, students, and even big name entertainers. The Southern Heritage Classic has pulled out all the stops for its silver anniversary. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention the big game? Once again, this year's matchup features a pair of Tigers from Jackson State and Tennessee State. And who could forget about the band and tailgaters? But of course, none of this would be possible without the vision and leadership of Fred Jones, founder of the Southern Heritage Classic, who knew the town was looking for a landmark event. He said, Fred, if you pull this off, you're going to have the biggest event in this town. While some doubted whether Jones could pull it off, many signs suggest that the Classic is making a big impact on local businesses, including Cozy Corner and owner Desiree Grandma Robinson. A lot of people come in, I mean, a lot of people from all over the country. For Jones, Robinson, and everyone else involved in the Southern Heritage Classic, they hope to keep the ball rolling into the end zone for another 25 years. Matthew Schwartz, WMC Action News 5. And best of five playoff series can go by quickly if you don't get off to a good start. The Memphis Redbirds coming off a series opening shutout defeat look to get back in contention at Omaha tonight. We take you to Warner Park where the Redbirds suffered a 7 to nothing setback on Wednesday. Top of the first, Redbirds get rolling early. Scott Moore humbers a fly ball all the way back to right field. Tommy Pham scores with him. That makes it 2 nothing. Memphis. Birds lead 3 to nothing. Then Omaha storms back in the seventh inning. 3-2 checked at. Whit Merrifield hummers to left field on a fly ball. Just bounces over the fence to tie the game at 3 all. It comes down to the ninth. Birds with a man on third. Luis Mateo batting wild pitch by Clayton Morrison. Greg Garcia scores. That's the game winner. Final score, 4-3. Redbirds win and tie the series at a game apiece. Game three is set for Friday night right here in Memphis, downtown at AutoZone Park. And the parents, St. Louis Cardinals, called up Xavier Scruggs from Memphis for their big game tonight at Milwaukee. The Cards also welcome back Michael Walker after a 10-week shoulder rehab. This one a grinder. Bottom of the first bases loaded for catcher Yadier Molina. And, the, and he comes through with a base hit up the box. Matt Carpenter scores. John Jay scoots in to beat the tag at the plate. Cardinals with their sixth straight game win, I should say, while Milwaukee loses its ninth in a row. Final score 3-2. to two. Cards now lead the NL Central by four full games.
The year was 1991. It was Labor Day weekend, much like this one. The last time a Memphis Tigers football team traveled out west to take uh, to California to take on a ranked team. That team, the 16th ranked Trojans of USC and the beautiful LA Coliseum. Then known as Memphis State, the Tigers were double digit underdogs to those powerful Trojans, but flipped the script in USC's own home stadium. The Tigers behind the names of former coach Larry Porter, Xavier Crawford, and Keith Benton beat USC 24 to 10 in one of the biggest upsets of the college football season. Switch to this year, 2014, and the U of M set to head west again on Labor Day weekend, again playing a highly ranked power, in this case, number 11 UCLA, and again, a double-digit underdog. Well, I don't think um, hanging the number seven team in the... And Tiger senior cornerback Bobby McCain heads west as the Tennessee Sports Writers Association Defensive Player of the Week. McCain had an interception return, which set up one of the Tigers' many touchdowns against Austin P. He was the nation's co-leader in interceptions last season. Tigers and Bruins tangle at 9 on Saturday night at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California.